Yes, yes guys, everything bite-sized here. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to be starting a new video series where we look at testimonies from people who have mental and physical disabilities. We're gonna be starting off with bipolar disorder, which I suffer from myself, and I'll be relating to what some of the people will be saying, but bear in mind there are many different types of bipolar disorder and it presents differently in different people. Anyway, so the initial question on Reddit is, I am an incoming fourth year medical student and I make an effort to establish rapport with all of my patients through sympathy and empathy. However, I have consistently found myself struggling to truly empathise with some of my psychiatric patients, especially those with bipolar. Part of my personality is a strong drive to control my emotions. I do not suppress or repress my emotions, but I maintain careful control of exactly how I outwardly express what I am feeling. So, because of this part of me, it is very difficult for me to empathise with those with bipolar disorder. I simply have no frame of reference to understand the inability to control emotion. I'll tell you what mate, it sucks. Um, I feel that this is a big deficit in my ability to care for my patients. Uh, this, this guy sounds quite nice, or this, this laugh sounds quite nice. So, help me. What is it like to have bipolar disorder? What can I do to help those with bipolar disorder? How should I go about maintaining a professional relationship with someone with bipolar disorder? Apologies if any of this demonstrates ignorance or prejudice. I don't feel like that at all. I think this is, this is quite well... I think, I, think, I think you can tell that they mean well. Anyway, uh, my goal is simply to be a better healthcare pro pro provider. Edit. Wow, thanks for all the responses. I don't have time to reply to everyone, but I'm reading everything. Very insightful. I appreciate you all sharing your different perspectives. Yeah, so there is definitely going to be a lot of different perspectives. And um, I'm not going to go into the different types of bipolar disorder because I'm not educated on it that well. And uh, I don't want to talk out my ass. So the first comment says, I think it is great that you're attempting to educate yourself on this early on in your medical career. I can understand your frustration. Prior to my diagnosis, I was an emergency RN and dealt with many psych patients in a hectic environment. It has often just seemed like people were being difficult on purpose. But anyway, here is my description. Not sure if you're much of a drinker, but mania can be similar to the best night out getting drunk. Yeah, that's so true. You can um, you can feel like you're on top of the world and having the time of your life. Um, I, I relate it more to being on cocaine. Um, but like, yeah, drinking, euphoria, um, all of your instinct. Oh, this looks really interesting, this post. No wonder it's the top, the top one. All of your instincts change. You lose your inhibitions and your priorities are not the same as they were when you were euphymic. Euphymic just means like a, a, re a normal, regular uh, mood state. Uh, which for me is rare to ever get. Um, I'm usually up or down. But anyway, yeah, let's read that again. Not sure if you're much of a drinker, but mania can be similar to the best night out getting drunk. All of your instincts change. You lose your inhibitions and your priorities are not the same as they were when you were euphemic. Yes, you're, you're, you're off your head basically. Yeah, like you are, you're, you're frantically happy and um, manically happy and you feel so good and you want to take on the world and this is me speaking now you want to take on the world and you think you can take on the world and um pardon me yeah no it gets it gets um gets intense basically i'll carry on now basically your entire sense of self changes your morals change all of a sudden you aren't a big believer in monogamy anymore and believe infidelity and ju is justified okay so i never got that far but um like i, I it, you, hypersexuality is a huge part of uh, mania for a lot of people and i do get hypersexual when i'm manic but i wouldn't to the point where i'd cheat on someone um your priorities change yep you must buy whatever item you're fixated on right now or yesterday in parentheses. And yeah, money burns a hole in my pocket when I'm manic and I just have to spend it on the stupidest stuff that I don't need. And the notion of consequence isn't even something that exists in the world anymore. Oh wow, they, they are nailing this. Yeah, you, um, you feel invincible like you're a kid again, like there's no consequences to anything. So you just do, you just go around like a nutter, basically. Imagine the mind has served you well all your life. You trust this mind, these instincts. So you just go along with what your instincts tell you. So it's not much, hey, I feel like blah, blah, blah. So I'll react and let this emotion out. It's more like you feel however you feel. And the only reasonable course of action is what your instincts tell you. So someone who is usually disciplined and motivated won't have their usual filter 
daughter at the time because they don't even realize that their behavior is inappropriate then we add psych yeah so yeah, so um yeah like sometimes it when you're manic you don't realize that you're being a bit too much for people to deal with and a bit loud and and that's led to people threatening to stab me um all sorts of stuff anyway let me have a quick vape and a quick quick drink glug of beer i know i'm really unprofessional so yeah um to be honest i might not even read the many uh many of the other ones because this this person is like dished it up really well they're called jezekiel jezekiel um okay that one set so yeah you don't realize that your behavior is inappropriate then we add psychosis to the mix now your usually trustworthy mind is showing you things that aren't there or you are delusional so now you literally think that you are righteously special and you need to convince everyone of your message like if you don't then you aren't fulfilling your purpose in life yeah um so i i don't get it exactly like that but i get i get psychosis where i hallucinate um and i get delusional and paranoid um so i i think people are out to get me um I, I hallucinate visually uh, some very rarely but sometimes audit, auditory hallucinations as well um, and, the, and the, 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 the special thing they're talking about the, the grandiosity um, delusions of grandeur I think things like oh I've got the best YouTube channel on the planet and it's going to take over everything um, things like that um, which are unrealistic and, um, but like you believe them at the time anyway let's carry on that's just the manic side of things and that hasn't even really started to cover it then there is the depression and it is similar that mind that you trust so much all of a sudden stops working for you it starts telling you that you're worthless absolutely um you feel like scum of the earth you feel shameful for no reason you feel like bottom of the barrel you feel like nothing is worth going on anymore um like there's you and then suddenly i feel like my youtube channel isn't going to go anywhere even if i'm getting good analytics i'm, I'm just like no nah, it's all i've wasted a year and it's not, not nothing's gonna happen um i don't and i don't deserve it and you know etc etc carrying on then it becomes purely impossible to gain joy from anything at all yeah anhedonia that's what that's called and that sucks so hard i had this today um where i was i was just I, I just didn't know what to do with myself because nothing was bringing me joy whatsoever um so everything you usually use as a motivator in life suddenly loses all meaning yep that for me there is the lethargy and general lethargy sorry and the general weakness slash muscle muscle pain i've never i didn't notice that could be bipolar that's what i get when i'm like um when I when I'm yeah when I'm oh that that's interesting. So getting up and about is pure torture. Think to when you have a bad flu or something and your whole body feels like lead. So all of all of your all of the above leads to someone seeming pretty frustrated from an outsider's point of view. You might think, why don't they just take control and fight this? Surely they want to feel better. They do. It is just that even existing causes momentous pain, let alone fighting. However, it all varies between individuals. There is also an issue of causation and comorbidities. For instance, someone who already has a poor support system and therefore can't support themselves has no access to treatment. Their disorder gets worse. They continue to push away family and friends slash isolate themselves and the problem gets worse. Yeah, um, yeah. You asked above what it was like day to day. It varies. Sometimes you can deal with minor symptoms and comorbid issues such as anxiety. Oh man, my anxiety gets so bad, you know. Um, that is a good scenario such as mine. In a bad scenario, an in individual who isn't in an episode may still have issues due to a lack of adequate treatment plus substance dependence that's abuse issues that are common among people with bipolar disorder yeah so i'm a, if you i've said this a million times on my channel but i'm a recovering heroin and crack addict and i've been clean for four years um and a lot of people who, who are undiagnosed with bipolar or even diagnosed like they they medicate themselves with drugs and alcohol um fortunately i I'm, i i don't drink alcohol all the time but i do drink more than i would like to um and i binge drink when i do drink so i need to sort that out um but yeah no like yeah he, he's right and, and also about the comorbidity part when you've got bipolar disorder you're more likely to have another mental illness on top of it as well which just adds more chaos into the mix um okay carrying on 
Also, manic episodes can cause brain damage. What? Manic episodes can cause brain damage, plus our medication causes a whole range of cognitive effects. Yep, yep, such as memory impairment and cognitive dulling. Yep, so even when not in an episode, a person with bipolar can be dealing with a lot. I hope this helps you gain some insight into what is going through a patient's mind when you treat them. Good luck with your studies and let me know if you have any further questions. Wow, oh my gosh, that was a bit of a read, yeah, but I tell you what, oh, just clicking my back. Oh, that 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 he that he or she absolutely nailed that, and he or she who was asking the question just got just got it answered. Like I'm not even going to go through all the others. I'm just going to leave it at that. That is that is just it's just I love Reddit. I do absolutely spot on nailed it. Yeah, I really do struggle with a lot of what they're talking about. Um, right, you've been locked into everything bite size. Check out my music videos, check out my shorts, check out my true crime content, check out my content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.